Welcome to Handsome Her, where women reign supreme. We take a look at the story of the Handsome Her Cafe in Melbourne, Australia. How it opened up, went woke, and then went broke. We'll show you the matriarchal, bigoted bullshit that they were doing on the next Escatrix. You can't make this shit up, people. You cannot make this shit up. What's up, people? Welcome back to the Escatrix channel. This is your man, Derek Bailey. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well so you know what's going down. And don't forget to hit that share button as well. And now we're over on Rumble as well. You can check us out over there as well. So today we're talking about Melbourne, Australia. Now they have their own plight with uh, feminism going on over there. And it's been going on for a while. Now this is an older story. This is about a cafe that was called Handsome Herb Cafe. Who didn't mind discriminating against men every chance that they got. That's right. They did everything under the sun that they say men do. And then turn to Brian and say, what? What you talking about? We're not doing anything. Because that's kind of what you get now when it comes to these ladies. These ladies talk about all the stuff that men do and where they can't go and all this kind of stuff. And second class citizens. And then they go ahead and they do the same shit. So this is a story about that cafe. We're going to look at the news story and then we'll come right on back. A cafe in Melbourne is protesting the gender pay gap like we've never seen before. One week out of every month, men pay an 18% premium. The tax is optional, but so far, no male customers refused. If people aren't comfortable with paying it or men don't want to pay it, we're not going to kick them out the door. Like, it's, it's just a good opportunity to do some good. The cafe, called Handsome Her, also has priority seating for women. Welcome to Handsome Her, where women reign supreme. This is called the Wall of Dames, so it's a wall of inspirational women. Owner Alexandra O'Brien calls it a space for women by women, with priority seating for females and an extra tax for men. One week out of every month we have an 18% premium for men, which is the same amount as the gender pay gap. I think it's fair if you think about the world and the gender inequality that we have. I think it's a brilliant idea because um, I don't think that many people know the actual gap. The tax is optional, but so far, none of the cafe's male customers have refused to pay it. I could wear that, yeah, considering that there is a fair, yeah, it's a fairly unequal pay gap between men and women. Even though there is supposedly equal pay, it doesn't, it doesn't really equate out there. Staff say the gender tax isn't aimed at excluding people, but rather educating them, with proceeds going to charity. If people aren't comfortable with paying it or men don't want to pay it, we're not going to kick them out the door. Like, it's, it's just a good opportunity to do some good. Estelle Greeping, 7 News. I have to say, in my almost 50 years of being on this planet, that is some of the most bigoted, discriminative shit I've ever seen. That I've ever seen. Did you guys, did you guys look at that sign? Let's, let's look at the sign. Look at this. Rule number one, women have priority seating. So that means that if the place gets full, your ass got to get up and get to the back of the bus like Rosa Parks, which is funny because they got a lot of Rosa Parks stuff in there. Now, I don't think that's I don't think that's what she was looking for when she wouldn't move off the front of the bus to the back. But these ladies somehow think this is equal. It was madness to begin with. I'm surprised that they didn't get their pantsuit off. I wish that there was some place around like that close to me. I would have went there and I would have I would have done everything I'm supposed to do, act nice. And when that 18% came, I would have been like, hell no. And then I would have told them you need to stop doing this practice that is bigoted and it's discriminatory. And if they wouldn't have done it, I would have sued their ass. I would have set their ass up for the big time too. I would have that damn place would have been closed way uh, way earlier than it did. Trust me on that. Now, what I love about stuff like this that there's women that think this is absolutely insane as well. 
There's a young lady who has a channel as well who did a video on these sons of bitches closing and why they closed. And it's apparent. But we're going to take a look at what she said. Today's story comes from outside of the U.S. And it's an oldie, but a goodie, and a perfect tale of karmic justice. Back in August of 2017, a couple of vegan feminists decided to do the unthinkable and start a business that relied solely on making sandwiches. Oh, what a sweet blasphemy. They named it Handsome Her and apparently only played music written and performed by women, celebrated International Women's Day with day drinking, charged extra for the mugs their coffee went in, unless you brought your own from home, and had a wall Crazy. dedicated to a photo of Michelle Obama. Whee! Whoa! The decor, which will most likely and ironically be the thing that gets this video demonetized, featured vagina rocks and prints of used menstrual products, while the menu boasted ridiculously expensive items named after Rosa Parks and Australian anti-capitalism activists on activated charcoal buns. How dare you sons of bitches use Rosa Parks' name for the shit that you done? How dare you, as a black person from America, how dare you, white feminists, use Rosa Parks. They also held lesbian speed dating events. You do you, girl. And a particular event titled, Can You Be a Feminist and Still F*** Men? Ooh, These ladies are weird, different. man. Never mind. <laughs> but perhaps the cafe's biggest claim to fame was the way they chose to fight oppression by prioritizing female customers, offering them special seating, and charging men an extra 18% one week every month, all in the name of equality. Their signature sign also included a Look line about how respect goes both ways. According to the BBC and CNN, the Australian cafe chose the 18% figure based on a 2016 report saying that men earn roughly 18% more in Australia and the U.S. That's a lie. The report they supposedly based this on, however, no longer exists, and the wage gap myth has been debunked over and over and over, including in one of my previous videos. Even a BBC article about the cafe points out that newer research points to only a 1-3% to difference in pay once all job differences are accounted for. And this was found true for several Western countries. When critics pointed out that the cafe's practices violated Australia's Sex Discrimination Act of 1984, owner Alex O'Brien told the press that the tax was voluntary. But according to the online reviews on Google and TripAdvisor, uh, that wasn't actually the case. The cafe's manager claimed that this was perfectly okay because men have their own spaces that we're not allowed into, so why not have that space for women? I couldn't think of a single place where men are allowed and women aren't. Women are even better received in men's bathrooms than vice versa at crowded venues. So one thing I got to say about white women started this feminist stuff, but the white women that hate feminism really, really hate feminism. They really, really do. And a lot of these ladies, they see how stupid this is to even be going through this stuff. So kudos to this lady. So I did an internet search. Now, credit where credit is due. It turns out that there are places that men are allowed and women aren't. The results were mostly places in the Middle East, holy temples in India and Japan, and a specific water slide in Germany after it caused vaginal injuries in several tourists. True story. Despite that, I don't feel like it's a good justification for discriminating against men. I mean, it is a privately owned company, and so they can do what they want and have their own rules. But it doesn't mean it isn't a terrible and discriminatory business policy. It was a dumb Interestingly, idea. Interestingly, according to some reviews, it didn't even matter if the customer was trans. They'd still get charged the extra tax and get shunned to the back of the restaurant. Wait a minute. You telling me that they're trans brothers and sisters and... That the, the trans people would come in there and they would still charge them the tax? 
They go to show that they, they know it's bullshit too. They know it's bullshit too. They still wanted the money from them, them greedy fucking sons of bitches. If the person had been born a biological man or had transitioned to present as a man, they were still charged the man tax, which isn't very inclusive. No, it's not. At one point, the cafe even went a step further, raising the tax to 21% and posting a sign that Handsome Her is an establishment where women reign supreme. But the man hate went even beyond that. There were several reviews from men complaining that they had been ignored by the servers completely, or else were told that the restaurant had to serve all the women in the restaurant first before staff could serve a cisgendered white man or a f***ing Latino macho. You know? Man, that is so bigoted, man. Oh, I wish I could have sued them, man. They probably ain't had no money anyway. But I would have sued their ass to oblivion anyway. I wonder... How awkward was it whenever they shunned a black man to the back after he ordered a Rosa Parks? And yes. the manager of <laughs> CNN that no one had been Bingo. turned away or mistreated, men had been happy to pay the fee, often paying even more than their gender mandated tax, and the owner claimed that men often traveled from across town just to Zesty be subjected man. to the man tax. The cafe stated that the extra taxes and donations were collected for women's services and later for women's charities, which is admirable, I guess. But if you've been here before, then you probably remember how the forced charity of Panera Cares went. Called Panera Cares is shutting down its last living location. According to founder Ron Shake, the nature of the economics did not make sense and the model wasn't sustainable. And in the end, Handsome Her went exactly the same route as Panera Cares. They closed their doors in April after less than two years in business. The owners wrote on a now defunct Facebook post that the reaction to the man tax showed us how <coughs> fragile masculinity is and solidified the necessity for us to confront and dismantle patriarchy. Though if the tables had been turned and women had become upset about the upcharges oh for goodness. being women, they would have been stunning and brave. The owners were seemingly surprised to learn that the backlash for their practices came not just from so-called men's rights activists, but also men and women in the LGBTQ community. Probably mm -hmm. for asking people their biological sex, their you're not a feminist unless you're a lesbian events, and their mission to bring lesbianism back into fashion. <laughs> I did not realize that lesbianism was an accessory. Ooh, cute purse. Nevertheless, the owners claimed that they were not closing due to vitriol from men's rights activists or because they weren't making enough money. They were closing because they was broke. I promise you, they were closing because they were broke. Not even because their business practices hurt their business. No, they said it was simply because they didn't feel like owning a cafe anymore because they were young and bored millennials. Their final parting message was for the world to take a good look at itself, stop blaming others, and meet each other with open hearts, free of hostility. And then and they bigotry. announced that they were happy to go out in a whirlwind of sad, angry male tears. That is your dose of feminist... Man, hateful as hell, man. They have to make sure before they got that last boot to the ass that they had to take some pot shots at men. They just had to get that little nasty pot shot in. They had to do that little last one on the way out, man. It's always like that. They got to get the last word. The very last word. But they are out of business now, man. Stuff like this doesn't work. These people are the minority they're not the majority they're just the loud ass minority just just like these people over in california that make movies the comic books video games that love to mess with people's escapism that they gotta put something in there just to let them know this is the same thing same thing you go out you can't just enjoy coffee and a bagel we gotta tell you about the damn patriarchy and that Somehow you owe me 18% of your money, which is insane and crazy. And that's why a lot of these places, they go straight out of business, man. They only stay open for so long. And then they're crying those lesbian tears. 
I mean, they dirt dog their own people, the trans community, by trying to nickel and dime them. Ain't that a blip? That's funny, man, but that's why you don't see many of these type of places no more, man. This this wokeism and all this other shit is dying down real fast, man. I, I'm so happy that it is. So that happy that it is. And thank you to the people of Melbourne that put this damn place out of business by not supporting this bullshit. Thank you very much. From the bottom of my black heart. Not evil heart, but black, black man heart. Rosa Parks. I got good heart. Just like her. I digress. Anyway, stop. If you guys like what I do here, man, make sure you go ahead, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. So you know what's going down right here at the Escape Tricks. And don't forget, like I said, we're over on Rumble as well. Young Man Rumble. Rumble, Young Man Rumble. Just in case I get kicked off this and get fumbled. You know how it is. I'll see you guys on the next Escape Tricks. Peace.